Hi, uh, good morning, Prerna. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Deepak. Just a quick audio check before we get started. So Ganesh, Pawan, Praveen, a very good morning to all of you. Can you all hear me? Cool. Thanks, Ganesh. Good morning, Pawan. Thank, thanks for the feedback. OK. So the good thing is we are a small group here, uh, so we can take enough time for questions from each one of you. And uh, the way this will work is, uh, so we'll, we'll divide this particular session and this discussion into two halves. So in the first 30 minutes or so, we'll discuss about why cloud computing is an exciting area and an exciting technology domain to you know get your next uh, potential opportunity in. And why is it? even interesting from a learning perspective, right? Because um, like analytics, like big data, like IoT machine learning, cloud is again a very horizontal um, set of technologies and concepts which people will have to learn, right? Uh, either today or tomorrow uh, to, to stay in, in sync with what's happening with technology and applications around the world. So that we will do in the first half, look at the industry, look at how it's growing, uh, how is it shaping up, right? Is there a growth potential um, just globally or in India as well and so on? In the second half though, what we'll see is how great learning and great lakes can help you uh, get onto this uh, growth journey, right? How great lakes and great learning uh, can help you become a solid cloud professional, uh, whether you want to become uh, an architect, right? Or just getting started with your cloud journey and so on, right? So that's what we'll do. Um, and do we have any questions before we get started? Any initial thoughts, questions? OK, looks like none. Right, so just a disclaimer, if you find any disturbance in the background, uh, there's a lot of construction activity going on, unfortunately, uh, around where uh, you know I'm, I'm doing this webinar from. So if you have any disturbance, just let us know in the questions window or in the chat window. <clears throat> right. Let's get started. So if you look at the last decade or so, right, uh, if you look at how companies have evolved uh, in the last 15 to 20 years, uh, from early 90s to until date, you will see a lot of transformation, not just from a software perspective, but also from a hardware perspective, right? So companies have not only evolved in the way they build applications, but they have also evolved in the way data centers are built, right? In the way your computers are organized, uh, in the way networks are laid together, and uh, 
in in the in the approach that people have taken to manage their businesses and IT, which is largely a support function. So if I'm sure all of you would agree, as as cool and as fascinating information technology seems, uh, it it always starts as as an enabling function, uh, as a support function to the core business, right? So if a bank is using information technology, it is not using technology to to create cool applications for you or to create cool websites or, or no, ERP systems for themselves. Uh, what they essentially want is their customers to be able to do more and more transactions, um, you know, uh, make it easier for them and so on. Similarly, when you look at companies like Ola and Uber, right, uh, they are largely and essentially uh, a transportation company, right, a logistics company. Now, their, their core business proposition is, hey, you want to go from point A to B, I'll have you do that, right? I'll support you in getting from point A to B. Now to do that because of the times we are living in and because of the adoption of technology and mobile phones and broadband uh, and all the high speed connection that you have and also the proliferation of data, especially with companies like Geo, uh, it's, it's very easy, right? For you, for us, all of us to have a smartphone, to have a 4G or 5G tomorrow data connection, uh, to have an app in there and that application is fundamentally the gateway for the company and the customer to stay connected, right? You don't have to shout at Ola or Uber to call for a cab, like earlier people used to do. So essentially, companies have evolved, technologies uh, have changed, and essentially what has changed is uh, how companies perceive technology, right? From being a barrier to their business and profit making to an enabling factor. Um, so companies are spending less time fighting with servers, wrestling with servers, and uh, they're focusing more on the users, right? They're focusing more on building useful applications and useful um, enterprise apps uh, and softwares, right? So you don't get points for using thousands of servers. Uh, as somebody using Ola, Uber, Airbnb, and so on, you you do not really give uh, you know any any shout outs to Uber using a millions of servers or Ola using uh, servers more than that. All you care about is, hey, do I get my ride or not, right? So customers really don't care about it, uh, but companies have to. But cloud is essentially uh, helping them get rid of this particular worry, right? So cloud tells you, hey, do not worry about a uh, lot many things that you used to worry about, both in terms of infrastructure, that's hardware, and uh, also your app, uh, you know, processes, app development facilities, app deployment facilities, and so on, right? So companies have evolved uh, immensely, and cloud is certainly helping them do that at a ridiculously high pace, right? Now, these are just some of the examples of companies that leverage the power of cloud computing. Uh, most of them, uh, not just here, there's a huge list of companies. Uh, many of them were literally born on cloud, right? So I, I would like to reiterate that many of the companies today were literally born on cloud, which essentially means all you need is an idea, is an application architecture. Even architecture is commoditized today. So all you need is a solid idea and and a complete uh, vision of what outcome do you need, right? And cloud will essentially give you all the services that you need to actually build an application, deploy it around the globe, and service your customers uh, in different geographies, right? The same thought 10 years back would have been, you know, a, a multi-year project, right? So in, in, let's say 10 years back, if you said, hey, I want to have an application or a website which, which needs to service multiple customers around the world in different countries, different geographies, uh, guess what? It's a, it would have been a, in a huge project. You would have to worry about multiple uh, things. Uh, of course, there were DNS services and hosting services, but the kind of high availability, the resiliency, the fault tolerance, right? Um, the load balancing kind of stuff that you need. And if you have to customize it, um, that wasn't there, right? Even a decade back. So these are some amazing companies, uh, a lot of them startups, right? Which use the, the services and infra given by cloud uh, to serve their purposes and most importantly, serve their customers, right? So companies now focus on building intuitive and engaging products and let the cloud worry about uh, you know, the enabling infrastructure, both in terms of hardware and software. Now, coming to the point that, hey, if there is a market, uh, whether there's a market for cloud computing or not, whether there's, there are enough opportunities for 
you know, people aspiring to become cloud professionals, uh, here's your answer, right? I don't want you to look at all the numbers here, but just look at uh, the, the top left corner, right? It says the amount of money being uh, or going to be spent by 2020, right, in the cloud computing domain, that's more than $150 billion, right? Um, this is essentially almost the size of the Indian IT industry, right? 150 plus billion dollars. Um, it's, it's not an accurate number, of course, but it gives you some idea as to the amount of money being spent in cloud. Uh, and that will certainly go up in the next five or 10 years, right? Uh, if you look at the top right corner, though, it says 85% of the companies use multiple clouds, right? That is almost every nine out of 10 company is using cloud platforms and not just one cloud platform, but from multiple cloud providers, right? So it's not just AWS, it could be AWS Azure, it could be AWS and a private cloud setup, it could be Azure and Google and so on, right? So it could be any combination. But the the point to note here is today, people are not even worried about whether to use cloud or not. It's, it's, it's a way past a uh, foregone fact. People are more worried about, hey, how do we best use cloud? Uh, and how do we best use services and technologies offered by different cloud providers for our various multiple needs okay so eight out of nine eight uh, nine out of ten companies are using cloud computing today right multi-cloud platforms if you come to the second row here and look at the first two boxes um, these two boxes tell you who are the major players right so aws has obviously the largest share uh, as far as cloud providers are concerned globally and Azure is a, is a close second. Now, it doesn't look too close here, but if you look at the market reports uh, over the last multiple quarters, more than last four quarters, right? Uh, and if you look at the revenue comparison year on year, 2017 and 2018, Azure actually had more revenue than AWS, right? Now, that can be surprising and, and mind-boggling, but Azure is seriously catching up. Uh, and if you look at the third player, Google is a distant third. Uh, but of course, because of multiple reasons, Google uh, isn't at the position that it should have been, uh, given that it started the use of containers uh, you know, way back 10 years ago, even, be even before Docker was born. Right. So as far as the market itself is concerned, it's a huge market, not just in India, but globally. Uh, as far as companies are concerned who are using cloud computing, okay, nine out of 10 companies are using cloud, that to multi-cloud platforms. Uh, who are the leaders in this particular domain? Uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google is the distant third. And uh, if you look at, finally, the, the bottom right box here, this number is slightly old because it's, it's, it's from last year, but uh, you know, three, or four, three out of four CFOs people who handle finances for a particular company um, say cloud will have the biggest impact on their business. This was last year, right? And this number is only going to increase. So essentially this, this particular deck here, this particular slide establishes uh, your conviction, right? Our conviction in, hey, there's a huge market. People are using it um, almost everywhere. There are three major players. Uh, if you want to become a professional, you should target upskilling in, in these three technologies. And um, the finance folks, uh, three out of four out of them, the finance leaders uh, are pretty much convinced about the, the impact of cloud computing on their business. And like I said, this is happening in India as well. So this graph here is, is showing only the public cloud services market, right? So public cloud services market in India is expected to be a $4 billion thing by, by the next two years. And this is nearly three times the growth that we have seen in, in the last four years, right? From 2016 until projected to 2020. So this is almost a linear growth. Um, I'm sorry, when I say linear, I actually meant exponential here. So this is um, almost um, three times in the last four year. And this should continue for the next five years uh, because of the given parameters that you see. So India also has a healthy cloud market, not just for business, but of course, um, for cloud professionals as well. Again, as we discussed, uh, who are the market leaders as far as public cloud computing market is concerned? Uh, now, this is based on the responses from multiple enterprises. Um, when asked about a question, uh, you know, about, hey, where do you run your applications uh, and on which cloud, right? So from 2017 
to 2018, um, if you see the comparison here, uh, AWS is again the top uh, public cloud provider, Azure is the second, and, and Google is the third cloud provider, right? To the question, who is using cloud and what form of cloud are people using? 96% um, of the respondents said, hey, we are using cloud. Now, if you go in depth into this particular answer, right? So people who are using only public cloud are just 21%. People, are, people who are using only private cloud are only 4%. Uh, but most of them are using some combination of public and private, right? That's the keyword here. Now, hybrid can be a confusing term, but uh, for, for the purpose of this particular session, let's just understand uh, that most of the folks, most of the companies are using some combination of uh, public and private cloud platforms, right? So they are doing a few tasks and things by themselves, and they are letting the public cloud provider take care of some other aspects, right? So it, it looks like a shared responsibility model here, and hybrid is, you know, the dominant uh, approach that people are taking. Hey, so we will do a certain part of our application and infrastructure. We will let you do something else uh, as far as public cloud is concerned, right? So that's the approach. But to, to the larger and higher question, hey, who is using cloud? 96% of people are using cloud. And excitingly, this is only the beginning of this cloud growth journey, uh, not just globally again, again in India. and. If you look at the green section here, it represents traditional data center, right? Old style data centers uh, without virtualization, without software defined networking, without uh, infrastructure as code, without uh, cloud operating systems and so on. So the green section here, if you see the progression, it is coming down, right? It's decreasing. So the more the green decreases here, the more uh, it means people are adopting public and private cloud. So from 76% in 2013, uh, just ended 2016, right? Uh, this reduced to 63%. So two thirds of companies globally still use traditional data centers. And uh, unfortunately, that number is larger in India. So we are catching up. But what this essentially means is there's a huge scope of improvement uh, in the usage and adoption of public and private cloud, which will only increase in the next five to 10 years. And uh, companies will need skilled professionals uh, for them to be able to do this, right? Because somebody has to do this particular migration and, and transformation from traditional uh, data centers to you know, virtualized uh, cloud-based data centers. Again, uh, we won't spend much time on this, but the adoption trend is, is highly positive. Uh, for public, for private, for hybrid, uh, or in general, if you see, if you ask, hey, any cloud platform, what's the adoption trend? Uh, it's it's actually consistent or growing positively, right? So this is all from the Right Scale 2018 State of the Cloud report. It's publicly available. Uh, feel free to download it. But these numbers are certainly substantial uh, if you wanted to understand the cloud market in general. Now, let me take a pause here and drive your attention towards, you know, away from numbers and understanding the market to starting to appreciate technology and how cloud has not just changed the way businesses use IT, but also how technical teams, how developers, how architects, how database professionals, how networking guys, how DevOps people go about their work, right? So cloud is also changing that. So a very common um, misunderstanding or a myth is that cloud is only about infrastructure, right? Cloud is only about VMs, only about data storage, only about, you know, some facility in a remote corner in this world where I get my, you know, uh, services from. While that is, uh, while some of that is partially true, um, there is much, much more to cloud than just that, right? So cloud is changing your, uh, your usage of APIs, how you create and deploy APIs for a global audience. Cloud has also enabled, you know, for, to, to, for you to create billions of containers um, and, and deploy things in terms of microservices from the point that you start creating an application, right? So containers are much more lightweight and much more agile as compared to a virtual machine, 
right? So without going into detail here, uh, if you know Docker, you know containers, right? If you have heard about Docker, you heard about containers. So containers is a generic concept. Uh, Docker is a specific implementation, right? So uh, containers actually need cloud to live and thrive. So cloud is an enabling factor. And again, if you have to create an application and deploy it in terms of microservices, it is it, it it's both expensive. Uh, it needs to scale out rather than scale up, which means you need multiple nodes rather than one single powerful node and so on. So for this scalability and elasticity to happen, you need an infrastructure that, that enables you to have an elastic and scalable you know, setup uh, on demand, right, rather than waiting for it. So cloud exactly does that. For database professionals, um, Although I am no data expert here, but uh, if you if you see the basic concepts, right? Uh, people started with relational databases. They moved to NoSQL databases. Today, people are talking about data lake, which is again an aggregation of multiple uh, shapes and sizes and forms of how do you st store data and how, what do you do with it, essentially, right? So those kind of concepts, like data lake, uh, need some place to live, right? And need some place to operate. So, so that's again where cloud comes in. And if you look about concepts like IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, there's an ongoing debate as to whether the computing should be centralized or should be pushed to the edge devices, right? So that's where edge and fog computing comes in, right? So if you are excited about self-driving cars, if you're excited about smart cities and so on, you would have to go through concepts like edge computing, fog computing, and, and obviously IoT and middleware. But again, if you just scratch the surface of it and, and go to see, hey, what is the underlying platform and what's the underlying set of technologies enabling all of this uh, and all of these exciting stuff, it's, it's again cloud computing, right? So uh, cloud is way more than just VMs and, and you know data storage and, and file systems. Uh, it is, it's enabling all of these uh, exciting technology developments. And as an aspiring cloud professional, you should approach learning cloud in in a comprehensive fashion right rather than just you know do one single certification or just learn about one single platform or a certain set of skills right so it's quite exciting the way cloud is enabling other things for all the reasons that i've mentioned until now uh, naturally professionals in the cloud computing domain are pretty much in demand uh, and not just in terms of numbers, but also financials, right? If you look at the compensation. And although this is in dollars, it's not just abroad in, in US, North America, or Europe, it's also in India. Now, you don't have to believe me, you, you can go and check on LinkedIn, you can go and check on your favorite other job websites, uh, and you can compare the compensation and also talk to your potential employers, right? So if you say you're a cloud architect um, who, obviously understands architecture in general, but also understands cloud uh, as you know the, the next uh, big concept or set of tools, uh, you will have an edge rather than you know, other architects in the room who do not understand cloud. Because guess what? Tomorrow, if you're creating an architecture for a certain enterprise application, uh, guess what? Uh, if not all of the aspects, many of the aspects of that particular application will live on cloud, right? And you need to understand that as an architect to, to understand the costing factor, how will it scale, what are the implications of going there with things like GDPR. You need to understand governance and security and so on. Right? So, so naturally, people are in demand who understand cloud and more so at senior levels. Like I said, there's much more to cloud than just infrastructure. If essentially the message for, with this particular slide here is if you want to become a solid hands on cloud professional, you should understand all these things, right? If not become an expert at each one of these, you should at least have a working knowledge of, hey, what is what are microservices? What is Docker? Uh, how does it contribute to my uh, development pipeline? What do I do as an architect with Docker? What is DevOps? Uh, OpenStack, even if you don't intend to work with it, it's. I recently wrote an article on LinkedIn as to why you should at least have a basic understanding of OpenStack before you start binging upon AWS, Azure, Google, and so on. Right? It gives you a solid uh, basic grounding into what cloud computing is, and you should also understand what big data is, what what's its importance to the business, how to choose different platforms, and um, you should also understand development and pass.
right? So with serverless becoming the de facto uh, communication language between developers, uh, right? If not all, most of them, uh, serverless is the next cool thing, and and that is essentially again a platform for you to develop applications, right? So if I am telling you, hey, just write the function, let it do its work, do not worry about where it executes, or how long it executes, and so on, it's I'm essentially telling you, hey, come to my platform, just write your function, I'll take care of the rest, right? So for a developer, it's a very powerful uh, proposal, right? So we also need to understand these things. So as a cloud uh, professional, if you wanted to become an architect, since uh, the program that we are discussing here is about architects, uh, you should know all of these things. A list of all the skills in demand uh, for cloud professionals, uh, databases and big data. You don't have to be a big data expert, right? Let me let me clarify that. You don't have to be a big data analytics expert or a big data you know, infrastructure expert, uh, but you should understand big data enough that given that you're in a discussion room with your clients or customers or, or your bosses, you should have a sense of what these people are talking about and why are they worried about big data, whether it's about dealing with it in, in terms of infrastructure or doing analytics on top of that and how cloud can help you, right? That's a decision you need to make. Uh, also, you should understand enterprise cloud migrations, especially in India where the services sector is, is dominant. We have very few product players. When I say few, it's relative to the number of service companies that we have. And if you're a service company, you're largely servicing customers either in Europe, North America, Asia Pacific, and so on, and people will move to cloud. So if your customer wants to move to cloud, you will have to undertake the cloud migration journey, whether you like it or not, right? So it's a top skill that you should understand. Uh, containers, again, for deployment purposes and development purposes, uh, DevOps, and cloud governance and security. These are some of the skills, um, the top skills that you should learn and must learn um, to stay relevant. Now, Turning our discussion uh, from what to learn and why to learn and how's the market out there to how to go about it, right? A very common question that people ask, uh, not just uh, in the webinars, but also during uh, you know initial interviews that we take, uh, during admissions, uh, during other discussions and so on. Hey, uh, I can just do a certification, uh, more specifically from AWS, for Azure, from Google. Why do I have to take a program such as uh, the one you're proposing and spend, uh, you know, about six months uh, and you know almost every weekend going through the grilling process of learning, right, and doing things hands-on? Um, I am assuming all of you are working professionals, uh, and if that is true, uh, all of you will understand that what you learn and do in a paper certification is far more different than what you actually do on on the job, right? So certifications are absolutely great. Uh, they certainly give you an advantage uh, in a pool of candidates. They give you a nice high filter in the list of candidates, but once you step inside the interview room, uh, guess what? It's not your certification talking, but your experience will take over, right? Because people will not ask you, for example, how EC2 functions or how, how S3 storage works. They'll basically give you a business problem and ask you to solve it, right? No certification does that. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, right? Uh, and because certifications are platform specific and service specific most of the times, and while even AWS certifications are trying to change in the sense they evaluate people, but merely having paper certification will not help you uh, even in the near short term run, right? So mid-career jobs require more than one skill. Um, you need to solve problems, you need to build solutions. So Doing certifications will teach you how to configure pieces of software and services, but solution building is something that you need to practice. And it will only happen if you keep doing things and fail at it and then succeed ultimately, right? Because you need to solve a problem, not just set up a service. So you need to learn how things actually work, not how they're supposed to work, right? So that's that's the valuable expertise people will pay you for, right? And this is not just us. This is a very common sentiment uh, we've heard from employers. and. Uh, it's not just in India, it's globally, right? People do not want uh, paper certified people. People want hands-on uh, architects and engineers. Hey, Rishi, can you hear me now? Is it still lower for you? Can other people still hear me?
Okay, okay. What about Rishi? You still there? Okay. My HTTP request to Rishi has been turned down. Oh, he's still there. Server available. Thanks, Rishi. Yeah, okay. Right, so like I was saying, uh, just getting paper certified will not help you, especially if you're a mid-career uh, senior professional. Uh, it only helps you, uh, you know, just stand distinctly from other people, but your experience needs to be hands-on, and that is why uh, we put up a program, um, you know, the way it is, and we'll discuss about it uh, just in the next couple of slides. Right, let me take a pause here and see if we have any questions until now, right? Because um, so we've, we've spoken about the market, the job demand, the, the skills that you need to crack this particular domain, and uh, how should you approach it, right? Now what we'll talk about is how can we help you, right? Uh, from the perspective of Great Learning and Great Lakes, what is the program that we have and, and why is it uh, you know, different from all the products out there? Do we have any questions until now or are we good to, good to go ahead? Okay, <clears throat> Praveen, uh, great question. Where does the IBM and HP Cloud stand? Um, so Praveen, if you, do you follow IBM Cloud in general? Okay, so if you, if you read up a bunch of articles and if you've been following IBM Cloud, um, you'll see that it's, it's not really in a great shape. Um, they've been following a confused approach last many years, right? Um, some years it was called soft layer, some years it was called blue mix, now it is called IBM cloud, right? So they're not sure about how to best go about the cloud business. And I'm not saying they don't have a cloud, great cloud platform. They have a lot of solid capabilities, but as far as market adoption is concerned, uh, IBM cloud is largely serving private cloud customers, right? Uh, similarly, HP. Um, People don't even talk about HP in the in the normal cloud circles. But for your question, um, if you want a private cloud setup, you might want to talk to IBM as such, right? But it's, it's not in great shape, neither of these cloud platforms, and they're not even in the radar as far as global cloud adoption is concerned. Uh, Praveen, does that help you? OK. OK, Prateek. So Pratik, are you a fresher? Okay. Right, so the good news is we've launched our second cloud program, right, which is specially meant for earlier career professionals. Uh, like you, not freshers though, but you can still uh, you know, try to go about it and see if it, it's relevant to you. I think it's highly relevant. So you can check our website. It's called Cloud Engineer Certificate Program. Uh, Pratik, you can check our website. Yeah, so that's 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 how you can start your cloud career, and it's meant for people who want to launch their uh, cloud careers at the start of the professional journey. Yeah, but this program especially especially is for uh, cloud architects um, and might not be completely uh, suitable for you to start with. But you can check the other program absolutely. Okay. Praveen, when compared to AWS Azure and GCP? Right, Praveen, I think I've answered that question. So AWS Azure and GCP are way, way ahead than IBM and HP Cloud for, for multiple set of reasons. Uh, Rishi, how much does it cover AWS Professional Certificate? You mean the program in terms of its concept coverage? OK. Uh, so Rishi, first of all, if you're not certified with AWS, right? Uh, firstly, you need to get the associate certificate. You can't, you know, directly apply for a professional certificate. Uh, as far as associate certificate is concerned, you should be able to, if you provided you do all the labs and hands-on work that we assign, and if you do all of all of the reading and exercises that are assigned to you, you should easily understand 60 to 70 percent of the questions from that certification, right? Associate. 
after doing that you need to at least spend some time implementing that stuff in your company and only then you are able to apply for a professional certificate right but it's easily more than 50% rishi for your question because professional is more situation oriented it will ask you questions which are more you know aligned towards problem solving uh, techniques and that's why it's it easily beyond 50% that you should be able to do right with the help of the program rishi does that help you <clears throat> okay so it's quite a lot yeah uh pratik like i said uh you should check the other program as well since you have uh, less than 2 years of experience i think that's the right program for you if you just want to get started with cloud computing if you want i can share the link with you and you can go through it uh we have a separate webinar for that particular program and uh, we'll discuss in detail yeah okay sure um so what we'll do is at the end of the presentation we'll share the email id and um, phone number that you can reach out to and happy to discuss in person yeah okay praveen has a question now that aws has announced aws outpost does this course touch upon it okay praveen first of all you you yourself mentioned that aws just announced this particular item isn't it so how do you expect any program to actually have it in the syllabus right if it is announced today it will take some time for people to actually use it and implement it and and come to the conclusion whether it is useful or not right uh, so we, we do not blindly just follow the list of things aws announces um, we make sure that people are using it and it only makes sense if people are using it that you learn about it right so not yet we'll see how it it goes if people are using aws outpost if it makes sense for businesses we'll incorporate that into our syllabus but if it is meaningless uh, there's no point teaching people what to do with aws outpost okay kashi uh, what's the question what is the best career for sql database administrator i am not sure if i understand the question what is the best career Oh okay I'm so sorry oh you mean oh it's a spelling mistake you mean career okay uh so kashi if you like data right i don't know what aspect of data do you like right whether you like the way data is stored and organized or whether you like how data adds value to the business right so i'm not sure i think you need to elaborate on the question okay okay i'll let you elaborate the question meanwhile let's let's move forward with the agenda and uh, we'll take in questions again towards the end of the session right so so for aspiring cloud architects what we have is a postgraduate program in cloud computing and uh, it's a 6 month completely online program uh, meant for working professionals right so uh, you can continue to do your job you can continue to go to your offices and still you know upskill in cloud computing um because it's a completely online program it happens on the weekends and it's 6 months uh, in its entire duration right it's designed for professionals who want to be on the path of becoming architects uh, having said that you will not become architect just 6 months later if you're not in a position to become one uh, but what this essentially means is if you have that intention this program will will you know set you up for success and give you all of the perspective that you need to build upon right so if you're just for example 6 to 7 years experience uh, given your competency and the skill set you might become uh, let's say a junior architect or associate architect uh, if you are senior enough you might become architect immediately if you have all the required skill sets plus this insight into the world of cloud computing uh, but essentially all the participants will start thinking like architects right that that's 
most important. So when you approach a business problem, uh, how to go about it, how to build a solution, how to design a solution even before building it and so on, all of those discussions are what are you know discussed in, in all of the mentor sessions that you attend and are also taught through concepts in all the courses that are there. Now it's a combined online format with live mentor learning. Uh, like I said, Throughout the week, you're expected to learn from our uh, recorded videos and instructional content from our own faculty. And each weekend for six months, uh, which is quite intense for most of the people, you're supposed to attend a mentor session, right? Uh, which is um, a thorough discussion with your mentor, and it's in a classroom setup. As far as hands-on work and exposure is concerned, um, it's a lot, right? When we say tons of hands-on work, you're literally expected to solve a lab every alternate week, and you're expected to solve a full project every month, right? From the data that, that we have from all the batches that have uh, all the people who have studied with us, uh, it's quite intense for them, uh, given they're working professionals at the same time, but it is equally rewarding, right? Uh, if you put in that amount of effort, it is actually very rewarding. And in a span of six months, you will gain a lot than you actually signed up for, right? Uh, by by merely following the program curriculum and um, you know exercising all the labs and projects and and starting through with all sincerity. Uh, the final pinnacle is that you get a certificate from Great Lakes Institute of Management, uh, clearly one of the top institutions uh, of India, right? Uh, according to multiple surveys, magazines, and rankings, uh, right? So. So that's the summary and, and the program in a nutshell. You will learn from people who are actually industry practitioners, right? Uh, you will learn from people who actually build solutions, let's say on AWS, on Azure, on OpenStack, uh, who actually do big data projects for customers like GE, Cisco, Walmart Labs, uh, Microsoft, and so on. And you will also learn from people who have uh, seen both the academic as well as technical side of cloud, right? So very senior people in the industry, all of the practitioners. Um, and we also have uh, people who are hands-on, not just from the infrastructure perspective, but also, uh, you know, most importantly from the development perspective, right? So you will learn from practitioners and you can expect to have quite an intense learning journey in a span of six months uh, in the program. What will you do as part of the program? Well, multiple things, but essentially you will learn and build multiple use cases um, in, in, all this, in all the six months, right? So the program is designed to be hands-on and solution-oriented. And the only thing or only set of things that get evaluated in the project are your labs and projects, right? We do not give you theoretical questions. We do not give you multiple choice questions. We will not give you use cases uh, to just read up and, and write upon it. But uh, you will be evaluated only on the hands-on work that you do, which is um, a set of labs and projects, right? Including uh, a three month capstone project. Yeah. Now, just uh, to give you an insight as to the kind of projects people do, right? This is a recent email from one of our uh, students, right? If you can see the date here, it's November 27, uh, just about one and a half weeks ago. Um, so, this is one of the first projects that people do, that all of you will do if you sign up for the program. Uh, it's basically a file uh, sharing and sync solution, which is deployed on AWS, right? So, so this student, when he did the project as part of the program, um, he was quite uh, excited about the project because it added a lot of value. Um, and he had a similar requirement in his own company so he went ahead and deployed the same project that he did as part of the program in his company's production environment, right? So the department that it is implemented now in the production environment, it's using file share and sync uh, services that own cloud gives you, right? And he's experimenting with it, he's, he's trying to work it around, and obviously it looks successful in one organization, and he will also implement the same thing in other organizations, right? So. You don't have to wait for all the six months to feel the real impact. Um, even from the first project that you do as part of the program, you can go ahead and implement it in your startup, you know, small or medium enterprise and so on, even for enterprises, right? So just to give you an idea, this is the kind of 
a response that keeps it, us encouraged and uh, you know pushes us to create more hands on projects uh, for you guys. Another exciting partnership that we have entered into recently uh, is with AWS themselves, right? So we have partnered with AWS for their AWS Educate program, uh, which brings a host of benefits for people apart from what uh, Great Learning and Great Lakes offers, right? So, uh, in summary, you can you can pursue these two full learning pathways in addition to the entire curriculum that we have, and you can do this after six months. Uh, of PGPCC, you'll have access to all the AWS content for one year from your date of enrollment, and you can do it parallelly with all the courses that you learn uh, from Great Learning, uh, or you can do it even after six months, right? There are multiple other uh, digital batches and learning pathways that you can complete, and you also get access to the AWS Educate job board, uh, which is a global job board um, from AWS and its partners, right? Um, so. You know, companies like uh, GE, um, Intuit, Blackboard, uh, JP Morgan, etc., also, you know, post their job opportunities on this particular job board. While it is targeted more for mid and early career professionals, uh, there are also openings for uh, senior folks, right? But the idea here is to um, give you a job board where you can apply to jobs not just in India but globally, right? Uh, so that these are the host of benefits that will come to you. Um, as part of uh, the PGPCC program, right, um, from AWS. Uh, towards the conclusion of this particular webinar, right, uh, I want to emphasize the career support that we have. Like I mentioned just now, you have access to the global job board from AWS Educate. Uh, we also share multiple opportunities uh, you know, from our side, uh, and collectively it gives you enough number of opportunities uh, to fine-tune your CV, to you know, revamp your LinkedIn profiles, to make sure that you network with your classmates and faculties, uh, because at, at mid to senior level, it's not just it, there's no campus placement, right? Nobody can guarantee you a job, but it's through networking and uh, and applications to the right profiles that you can get a better transition, right? So we do career development workshops. Um, we share opportunities with you. We encourage you to network with your classmates who themselves might be hiring managers in their own companies. And obviously, you will hear from industry experts separately through industry sessions. And that's another opportunity for you to network and, and you know, explore a, a possible transition. Right, so, so that's about it uh, for this particular webinar. Uh, thank you, everyone, for giving time to this and attending it. Um, we'll take questions now because we have some time left. And uh, if, you, if you have any further questions, even after the Q&A, uh, feel free to write uh, to this particular email or call up this particular number, right? We'll be happy to discuss one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whatever further questions you have. But we still have about five minutes left. Um, and I'm looking at the question window, if you have any questions. Okay, so I do not see any questions here. Which I'm assuming is a positive sign. Okay. Okay, finally, Ganesh has a question. Okay, my company is working on GCP. I want to understand how much focus would be on Google Cloud as part of the course. Uh, so Ganesh, great question. If you see the curriculum, uh, Apart from learning AWS significantly, you also have an option to choose between Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud, right? So you will learn Google Cloud as part of the course. But if there is any set of specific topics, uh, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, Rishi, uh, again, uh, great question. So for AWS, uh, the way it works is uh, we will give you credits uh, and you'll have to manage the account and do the labs, uh, which gives you a lot of flexibility, right? 
Um, essentially, the message is you, do, you will not have to spend anything from your pocket, right? So we'll give you credits for AWS. Uh, as far as Google and Microsoft Azure are concerned, uh, we use the free account given by them because it's a lot of money that they actually offer free of cost. Uh, for, for Azure, it is $200. For Google, it is $300, right? So you actually don't need um, you know, more than $300 to learn Google, honestly. Yeah, so we do it that way. For AWS, we'll give you credits. Uh, Rishi, does that answer your question? It is quite important uh, from a lab perspective. Perfect. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, you don't have to shell out any dollar or rupee from your pocket to do the labs, except for the Capstone project. Uh, we'll discuss that separately because Capstone is a three month effort. And once you enroll as part of the program, uh, we're happy to discuss it. It's a team effort, essentially. OK, let me take the next question. Um, hey, Amit, I think there is some problem at your end because other people are able to hear. Oh, yeah, you cannot hear questions because people are typing it. Let me repeat it for you. All right. Let me repeat it for you. No problem. OK, Ganesh, will there be GCP labs as well for projects? Who is the mentor for GCP? Uh, Ganesh, yes, there will be labs for GCP as well. Now, who is the mentor? There are a couple of people. Um, Right. Uh, I cannot give you a specific number because, um, you know, it depends on the bash and, and the time you sign up. But uh, do not worry about it. All your mentors are hands on professionals. Right. You will have labs for it. You can also choose GCP to do your project, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Ganesh, again, access to content after course completion. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You'll have all the content to access even after graduation except for AWS Educate, which you will have for one year, and after that, it expires from AWS's side. But for great learning content, you'll have all of it. Hey, Amit, that's a very high, okay. Both. Uh, if, you, if you saw the entire webinar, right, uh, obviously AWS is the top cloud provider, but Azure is a very close second. And, and Google is the third cloud platform. But it also depends on what uh, cloud platforms your company is considering or what kind of you know platform uh, you would want to make a career in. Ganesh, uh, AWS is mandatory and you can choose between Azure and GCP. Yes, that is correct. So you essentially get to learn two cloud platforms. Uh, Ganesh, was that clear for you? OK, so uh, Ganesh, I think your question uh, I'll, I'll answer first. Can I take Azure and GCP and leave AWS? Uh, well, not really, to be honest with you, because uh, so AWS, we do not teach just as a platform, right? AWS is more like the medium of instruction. And you, you learn multiple concepts through AWS, but we don't teach you, you know, just the set of services. So you won't be able to eliminate AWS. Um, you can take AWS and you can also um, learn Azure and GCP, by the way. But because you have to choose between Azure and GCP, you have to make that decision. Uh, but as far as uh, content is concerned, we can share content for both with you, right? For all interested people, Azure and GCP. That should help you. But mentoring sessions, you have to choose either of them, right? Uh, Amit, uh, interesting question. No, you will not be treated as fresher, right? You have 13 plus years of experience. Um, that too in system administration and network admin. So when you when you do this course, you can absolutely apply for a cloud architect role uh, immediately. And even if you don't get an immediate transition, uh, six months or one year down the line, you should be able to re, you know, uh, realign your career uh, as a cloud architect. I don't think that will be the case. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Praveen, what would be the content materials like? Um, OK, let me put this question back to you. What do you think uh, should be the content for you for you to learn? What do you expect? Hey, 
Okay, Praveen, you still there? Okay, so uh, so Praveen, you have you'll have a host of things, right? So, um, so you're expected to learn through the week from all the video content that we have. So these are video lectures by our own faculties, right? And the average duration of content that you have every week to learn from is is three to five hours, right? So it's a lot of content every week for you to consume. Once you have done that, on the weekend you come for a two-hour live mentor session. Right, which is to clarify your doubts, questions, discuss use cases, and so on. Once you've done that, uh, you have lab, right? So for labs, you'll be given lab problems. Uh, of course, after you complete the lab and the deadline is over, you'll be given a video solution so that you can look at step by step and complete the lab if you were unable to do it. Uh, similarly, for projects, we'll also give you video solutions. There's a whole bunch of additional learning resources that we have, like, you know, um, best practices recommendations you'll get lecture notes for each of the course you know, created by us you also get certification insights and experience sharing sessions right you also get recorded versions of industry sessions so um praveen for your question there's a lot of material both video uh you know documentary and so on for you to learn okay amit i see you it's a long question okay <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, Ganesh, it's no more a dual certification. Uh, you'll get a certificate from Great Lakes. Yeah, that has changed now. Absolutely. But that has not changed any value out of the program, right? Uh, we have stopped that particular partnership because we are looking to explore other partnerships, uh, which will bring more value. But as of now, it's only Great Lakes certificate. But the program has only improved over time. Uh, Amit, so a very interesting question, right? So I'll tell you what, uh, you, you're actually more experienced than the average person in the class. So the average experience is 11 years. And as far as the questions is concerned, um, if you have the fear of you know asking a certain question that other you know, people who know cloud a little bit will think it's a very silly question. Believe me, we take all questions with equal joy and seriousness, right? And if, you know, the fear of other people making fun is natural, but it's unwarranted, to be honest with you, right? Because it's always the case, right? At this age, if you even if you go to a, a business school or even if you take up a classroom program, there are always different types of people, people who know a little bit of cloud, people who don't know. But I'll, I'll tell you what, even for people who are AWS certified and they have multiple AWS certifications, not just one, uh, this program has a lot of insight and knowledge to offer. Even they are surprised by the amount of hands-on work that they have to do. Okay, so I have a testimonial for that. Uh, but do not worry about it. You will have a program team to take care of that, right? Yes. Uh, in, a, in the first cohort of this program itself, you know, one year back, almost in January 2018, uh, we had a guy who was just five years of experience. Everybody else was more than 10 years of experience, right? But that person turned out to be one of the best students in the program in the first batch, right? Of course, it took a bit of counseling and support, but that's what we do, right? Apart from uh, everything else that you get. So do not worry about it, Amit. Uh, Ganesh, yes, it will help you. But our curriculum is not you know, designed you know, as it is for certification because we believe certification should be a nice side effect of what you learn, but we do not teach based on the certification uh, syllabus. But of course, what you learn is obviously the same set of concepts, uh, but we focus on the concepts more than the tool. Uh, Ganesh, does that help you? It will help you, don't worry. Yeah. Amit. Uh, so Amit, you should go for AWS first, unless you have a project in your company which focuses on Azure, okay? And then you can take Azure. In the in the fourth or fifth month of the program, after after um, some practice, you should go for AWS certification. Yeah. Okay, Praveen, would be the new contents made available in future for us if any new features are announced by cloud providers? Uh, Praveen, so if there is a major upgrade uh, that we do, so, um, so for every small uh, new service here and there, 
uh, if it's a major service, we'll make it available. Not a problem. Right. So what I mean here is essentially uh, recently uh, AWS launched a web application framework some months back. Are you aware of it? WAF web application framework. I'm sorry, firewall. My bad. Um, a web application firewall, right? So, yes. So, if it's a major concept, we'll make it available, but uh, it's also not perpetual. There is a limit to it. Um, but as for the core concepts, uh, do not worry about it. You'll have you'll have it available to you. But if there is a new offering from our side, uh, that has to be enrolled separately. Uh, Amit, no. So for developers, uh, so Amit's question is, if I don't know programming, uh, will that be a trouble in this industry? So Amit, you don't have to know programming. Uh, you you at least need to just understand a basic set of shell scripting, which I'm sure you must have seen even as a system administrator and as a network admin, right? Yes, so so that's that should be enough. And for developers on cloud, we have a separate track, which is called developer track, which is an extra certificate from Great Lakes. Um, and you have to take up, you know, two extra courses and do an extra project, and that is without any extra cost for you. Yeah. So don't worry about programming. Uh, not as part of the architect track. No, not at all, Amit. Perfect. I'm delighted to see these many questions. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, even though we are just five people out here. Okay. Ganesh Agarwal, um, can you explain more about that development track? Okay. So Ganesh, development track is fundamentally for people who would like to understand cloud native development, right? How do you go about doing uh, you know, programs, creating applications completely on cloud? For that, we have an extra course that you need to take, right? Which you will have to take after completing all the PGPCC requirements because this is optional. Um, so you take an extra course, you build an extra project, you learn a set of extra concepts, and only then you complete all of that. You get an additional certificate that you have also completed the development speciality track as part of PGPCC, right? That is optional and you can take it. Uh, but it's only meant for, um, it's there on the website, Ganesh. Uh, have you visited our website, greatlearning.in? Yes, yes. So if you if you look at the PGP cloud computing program, if you scroll down, you'll find developer track. Just search for it on the page. You'll find it. If not, uh, feel free to write an email or just call up this number and um, you know I can walk through it. We can have a one-to-one -one discussion about it. Yes. Is there on the program page? Absolutely. Yes. Right. Um, Okay, do we have do we have any other questions? <clears throat> okay, so in the interest of time, we are we are done with the set agenda. It's it's over 12 now. Uh, unless there are any quick questions, um, we'll close for today. And you can you can forward your questions right to us, call us with the details on the screen, and, and we are happy to help, right? Clarify your doubts. Uh, thanks a lot, Ganesh, for joining in. Appreciate your time. Uh, all the best. Uh, thank you, um, Praveen. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Abdur. Uh, appreciate the kind words, Amit. Uh, thank you for joining in. Um, thank you all. Uh, wish you all the best. Have a great day and look forward to helping you. Uh, in getting your cloud career up to speed. Thanks a lot. Good day.